Howdy friends, welcome to Tuesday. Um, it is the 29th of April. I had to check on that today. I, my mind's a little out of sorts today. But today's post is stupid is as stupid does. Now that is one of my favorite quotes from the movie Forrest Gump, which uh, I believe was made well before you were born, which is a little sad for me because I remember going to see it in the theater. At any rate, um, <laughs> that aside, what does that saying even mean? Stupid is as stupid does. Well, we had a conversation today based on our fire starter that you guys wrote, which is, as always, down below this video, which talked about Stephen's desire to not have his mom call his school. And we said, you know what? We're all pretty stupid. I'm, I'm including myself, don't you worry. We're all pretty stupid. See, we know in our heads, logically, that no one makes it through anything alone. That it's always a better idea to get support in things that are the most difficult in life. We also happen to know that the people in life who are going to help us the most through these difficult times are the people we care about the most. And this has been kind of a big old theme running through this entire book. Hmm, that should give us a little bit of a clue that we can maybe predict or infer that this might be heavily related to the main idea we're talking about this notion of how do we deal? And most of the time we say we deal stupidly. We want to keep it all inside. We had some really good discussions about why we don't tell our parents certain things, why we don't tell our teachers certain things, why we don't tell our friends certain things, why we don't let people into our lives who really are there and exist to care about us. Some of you made the point, and I get this because I thought this way too until I became a teacher, some of you say, well, teachers and guidance counselors only care because it's their job. Well, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't care about you if I weren't your teacher, but that's only because I wouldn't have met you. Make sense? See, your teachers and your guidance counselors got into these jobs because they care. See, we want to help. That's like kind of our job and kind of what we love about our job is that we get to help you guys navigate life. We're here because we care. Now, if I weren't your teacher, I might not care. Again, like I said, because I probably wouldn't even know you. But don't, don't discount your teachers and your guidance counselors or even other professionals like, like psychiatrists or psychologists, therapists. Well, sure, it's their job to care, but they wanted this job. We all applied for this job. We signed up for these jobs because we care. So don't exclude resources just because you think that they don't know you as personally. Well, maybe not, but that doesn't mean they care for you any less. Moving on to the people that you know a bit more personally. Your friends, your family. We had some discussions about saying, well, it's really awkward for me. It's harder to have the conversation with my mom or with my friends or with my dad or with my brother or sister or whatever than it is for me to just deal with it myself. And then I, I, I ask this question, which is a leading question, which means you really already know the answer to it. I say, is it? Is it? No, of course it's not easier to deal with it yourself. You're just not used to having the conversation with people because we're not open about our stuff. And guys, I keep saying we because I still struggle with this. I've been alive for more than twice as long as all of you. And I still struggle with saying Hey, um, I need help with this. Hey, um, this is a struggle for me. Hey, um, I'm dealing with this and I just need a little support. It's really awkward for us because we're not used to having these conversations because we try to keep it all locked up tight. Well, we know that that's not going a good place. As a matter of fact, in this particular chapter, Take Me, that we explored today, we notice that Stephen is sort of in the middle of the grieving process. He's still doing a little bit of denying, although that's kind of faded away. He's still pretty angry, and he's now moving on to bargaining, where he's saying, listen, whatever can happen to me, just leave Jeffy out of this. Let Jeffy be better. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this, as long as you make Jeffy better. He's talking to God, right, because that's who he believes, and that's his access point into things that are beyond his control. But, you know, we do this all the time. We're in the bargaining phase. Well, we do see Stephen open up with one person. Who is that? It's Jeffy. 
we see it as he's connecting to him, as Stephen's trying to help Jeffy deal with all these people who are coming in with really good intentions to visit Jeffy, but I can tell you from personal experience, when I was being visited, when I was really, really sick, I wound up spending way more energy and way more of my joy and way more of my enjoyment and way more of everything that I had. I used it up on the visitors to make them feel better and to make them feel good to the point where when they left, I was the one feeling exhausted and emotionally drained and they were leaving feeling great. And that's sort of the opposite of what's supposed to happen. Even though the visitors have the best of intentions in mind, Stephen was helping Jeffy get through this situation by providing all this sports commentary and this and that, and he's really connecting to Jeffy, and that's the one person that he seems like he's really being himself around. There's one problem with that. His greatest confidant is a five-year-old. Well, guess what? A five-year-old can't really help a 13-year-old all that much with their problems because they don't have experience. That's just like when you say, well, the adults around me don't know what I'm going through. Well, Maybe not exactly, but chances are good they've gone through something very, very similar or have watched other people go through something very, very similar. We have more experience. We're smarter than you are. We're more experienced than you are. That's by design. You haven't lived as long as we have, so we have something to offer to that relationship to help you through certain things. A five-year-old? Not the best place to put your faith, especially what if... Things take a turn for the worse, and Jeffy takes a nosedive in terms of his health. Then what's Stephen going to do? Who's Stephen going to connect with? Who's Stephen going to be himself around? And the whole problem is going to compound and get bigger because he's not willing to share himself with anybody else. That's a, that was a big point of discussion that we talked about a lot today. And I'm glad that you guys are getting the opportunity to think about all these things in real life because... That's what the Common Core and ELA and really just being a good reader in general and frankly, being a person in general is all about. Getting into with these thoughts and these empathetical and hypothetical situations so that when we're faced with tough things in the real world, we at least have some sort of experience with how to deal with them even though it's the experience of others. Great stuff. I do want to point out that Stephen is doing one little thing that's helpful to him, even though he's neglecting all of his other responsibilities. And like I said yesterday in this post, it's really going to make things harder if you neglect all of your responsibilities. Stay in control of the things you can control. One positive thing, though, that I can point out that he's doing, um, he's been talking about his music a ton because he's immersing himself in the world of, the, of his drums so that he can have a break and have a, a, a safe haven where he can vent all of this excess energy and pent up anger and angst and worry and it's when he's playing music he can just let loose which is great but only when paired with actually sharing and getting stuff off your chest with the people who care about you the most another important thing uh, one last thing that we talked about a lot that I wanted to point out to you is just this really interesting way uh, Stephen talks about this dance that he's um, going to. He compares it to dodgeball. And he's using all of these similes and metaphors, these wonderful things, to express how he's feeling. To help you get a better, what's that word? Understanding of how he's experiencing this. Better understandings allow us to connect with people better and enable free-flowing communication. Guys, English language arts might as well be called English life arts. It's all the same stuff. I really hope that as we're nearing the end of this year, you're going, Mr. Kaz, we're learning all the same stuff this whole year. And you're right. See, sometimes, and this is what I love about Common Core, by the way, because Common Core gets a, a really bad rap. I think it's really excellent. The way it's being applied is, is kind of uh, in a lot of places. But the Common Core itself is really great because it focuses on this element of connection and being able to ground our learning in something useful. And that's why I say English language arts could be called English life arts because that's what we're aiming for. Being able to successfully communicate and interact with the world around us and the people around us. And how do we do that? By making sure people understand us and can connect to us. That's how quality communications happens. Well, when we're trying to explain something to somebody and we don't know how to explain it or they can't understand it, we like to do something that, that goes a little something like this. Well, it's like, well, you know when? Those are comparisons. 
similes, metaphors, aimed at helping people understand us better to make that connection, to enable effective communication. Guys, it's all coming back to the same place. Gosh, it's almost like I planned this. <laughs> Hopefully, all the work that you guys are doing in class and all the great discussions we're having, we're really turning over a new leaf and you guys are really starting to remind me of eighth graders. And that's so great to see. Keep bringing your A-game, I love it. One last thing I have to say for Mrs. Baker and Mrs. Malagisi, make sure you get a great night's sleep tonight. Make sure you are prepared for tomorrow mentally and the next three days in general for these assessments. I want you to make sure that you are doing everything in your power to put your best foot forward. Again, for a couple of reasons. These tests help us determine how better to teach you and how better to change our, uh, the way we teach for next year. And for those teachers to get a sense of where you guys are so that they can alter their lesson planning and their teaching accordingly. That's what this is all about, don't forget. It's all about you guys improving. See, whether you get a one, two, three, or four, you should be proud of that as long as you tried your best. Well, what enables you to try your best? Getting a good night's sleep, making sure that you are prepared, making sure they eat a breakfast tomorrow, and that you come in ready to handle your business. And let's start, or let's keep, I should say, moving up in the ranks, because we've improved over the last couple of years, um, really the last two years, we've moved up. We've made small gains in where we are in the order of schools, and I firmly believe that you guys are every bit as smart as a Clarence, as a Williamsville, as a whatever, now that we're really truly putting in the effort that puts us in that realm. Sky's the limit, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow after your assessment.